Hey everybody and welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks. It's Monday evening. We are coming off a weekend that uh, certainly got a little bit bumpy at times, especially of course on Sunday. You know, on this video and on my social media and even on the, our newscasts late last week, I talked about how I thought the severe weather chances on Saturday were not that high. They were probably going to be higher on Sunday and well that indeed came to fruition. We had a lot of wind damage across the valley, a lot of trees uh, suffered some damage and a lot of trees fell and we had some power outages of course as a result, a lot of this occurred around midday and early afternoon on Sunday. We had no tornadoes in our television viewing area, but we did have some strong winds. Officially at the airport, we gusted over 60 miles per hour early in the afternoon on Sunday. But just a couple of hours to our east, uh, just east of Pittsburgh, over towards Latrobe, uh, and right on the kind of near the spine of the uh, Laurel Highlands, we did have four confirmed tornadoes. All of these were EF1 rated tornadoes. Um, the Pittsburgh Weather Service office went out and uh, their survey teams kind of fanned out today and determined that each one of these was an EF1 tornado. And you know, that was one of the things we harped on a lot uh, over the weekend, especially that east of I-79 in Pennsylvania, that would be where the combination of instability and shear, wind shear, would be best. Now we, we had enough wind shear certainly to cause a lot of problems in terms of strong winds in eastern Ohio, but the, the combo of the wind shear and the instability in the atmosphere would probably be higher off to our east, and indeed, indeed we did see four tornadoes over there. And Wow, what a weekend it was. Look at the uh, outbreak that occurred over the last 72 hours. All of these tornadoes, not only here across Pennsylvania and Ohio, especially Pennsylvania, of course, but from Indiana down the Mississippi River Valley and down into the Deep South, dozens and dozens of tornadoes. It was a big weekend in Mississippi, parts of Alabama, as well that high risk that the uh, storm prediction center the high risk level five that they put out for saturday on friday that's certainly verified in parts of mississippi and alabama with several tornadoes there and boy ironically enough yesterday began severe weather awareness week in the state of ohio pennsylvania has their annual severe weather awareness week in the month of april uh so all week on weather for weather geeks on my social media and on our newscasts and on the storm tracker 21 app we'll be talking about you know severe weather and different uh different topics related to severe weather and always with severe weather awareness week we have the statewide tornado drill coming up wednesday morning at 9 50. many communities will test their tornado sirens now of course you know if you watch this video regularly if you've been following me for a while Tornado sirens are not my favorite thing in the world. Uh, they, they serve a purpose, but it's a limited purpose. And it's certainly not as big of a purpose as it was 50, 60 years ago. Most of us have many better and more reliable ways of getting warnings when tornadoes threaten. And, you know, yesterday's storms were a good lesson outside of the tornadoes that occurred east of Pittsburgh. It was a good lesson in, in my old saying that wind is wind. When you look at the enhanced Fujita scale, these these this is how we determine uh the ranking of tornadoes from ef0 up to ef5 um the winds that we saw in some communities on sunday were roughly equivalent to an ef0 even an ef1 tornado zanesville ohio down towards interstate uh, 70 they gusted close to 75 miles per hour over towards latrobe in Pennsylvania, near where some of the tornadoes were confirmed, but I'm not sure if this gust was related to a an actual tornado or not. Uh, Latrobe gusted to like 89 miles per hour. Um, that's equivalent to an EF1 uh, tornado, and that gust may have been related to the uh, tornadic activity that was nearby. It may not have. I'm not sure. But uh, those kinds of winds, uh, you know, when when you get up to EF1, certainly. Uh, you can have a lot of tree problems, uh, poles can be toppled, power outages, and you know you really start seeing the roof damage ramping up when you go from EF0 to EF1. When you start seeing winds of close to 100 miles per hour, um, you see a lot of roo roofs, roofs uh, being stripped away. And we indeed did have quite a bit of damage with those EF1s in West Central PA. But then, just like flipping a switch, it was kind of back to winter today and officially at the Youngstown Warren Airport with the snowflakes that were around this morning 0.2 now there's probably never 0.2 on the ground at any one point but officially the measurement at the airport was 0.2 one day after having severe thunderstorms welcome to March in eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania uh, incidentally for the month as a whole that brings us to a relatively paltry 2.1 almost 5 inches 
behind the average. And today, of course, was St. Patrick's Day. And uh, this was our coldest St. Patrick's Day since, uh, I think, 2007, when the high was 31 degrees. Uh, last year, we had a high of 49. And, you know, we haven't had a warm St. Patrick's Day really in a few years. It's been since 2022. The warmest on record occurred back in 2012. At 77 degrees, the snowiest St. Patrick's Day, by the way. That's that's an old record, 19 36, five inches worth of snow. All right, we're over the halfway point now in the month of March. And with the exception of the southwestern U.S., most of the country has had a pretty mild month of March. We're running over six degrees warmer than the average here locally. That number certainly is going to change. Um, but so far, March has been in stark contrast to uh, the way a lot of winter was. But going forward, I, I'm not expecting as many May previews as we have had. Coming up after Futurecast, I'll, I'll talk about the longer range, and we'll blow through Futurecast pretty quickly here because a couple of nice days coming up tomorrow and Wednesday. We'll shake off the chill in the morning. Warm front lifts off to the north. We'll have abundant sunshine on Tuesday, sending those temperatures up into the 60s. And with that warm air mass continuing to build in on Wednesday, even though we'll have kind of a milky sky Wednesday with a veil of high clouds for a lot of the day, we'll get into the 70s. That may be the last time we see the 70s until sometime in April. Next cold front's coming our way. This will not produce severe weather, but it's still a pretty strong front. And the high water mark in terms of temperatures Thursday will be first thing in the morning. Temperatures will fall through most of the daylight hours on Thursday. With rain showers around and these snowflakes out here may try to pivot through towards the end of the day Thursday. Might see a couple of snow flurries like we had this morning. Not in the morning, but towards the evening on our Thursday. After that, uh, you know, it's just kind of generic March chill. These temperatures are pretty close to the average within a few degrees, but uh, unremarkable in terms of uh, temperatures at the end of the week and into the weekend. And we start thinking about the longer range. There's been some cooler trends on the modeling for the last, oh, kind of week of March. We haven't talked about the, the longer range in a few videos because we had that severe weather event that we needed to focus on. But, uh, you know, I was convinced about a week ago that uh, we would hang on to generally pretty mild weather probably through the end of the month. But well, this is not a cold pattern per se. Um, next week, you know, I don't see a lot of warmth. You know, there's probably no more May previews um, during the month of March. Could we bob above average occasionally? Yes. Um, but, you know, you don't see 70s on this 10-day forecast uh, once we get beyond uh, the day on Wednesday. I showed you this graphic on Friday, and we're not going to see any change here on the week three and four forecast because they only update that on Fridays. But as you can see today, the Climate Prediction Center six to ten day and eight to fourteen day outlook shows some blue around the Great Lakes, and I think that's generally speaking the right idea. Don't see a lot of again this kind of May-like weather that we've had occasionally over the last several days. Don't see a lot of that coming. It looks like now during the last week or so of March. And I think April will probably start out fairly chilly as well. That'll do it for me on Monday evening's edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. Have a great rest of your night, and I'll meet you right back here on Tuesday.